This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield with Markets in a Shambles. This is going to be a double header of The Money Makers. We're going to look in the first show at the year that was in 2015 and try and figure out what on earth happened. And then tomorrow we'll look at 2016 and think what on earth is going to happen. So it's a big one for us. Joining me this evening around the table, some of the best investment minds in the country. Dr. Adrian Saville, Chief Strategist at Citadel and at Canon Asset Managers. Peter Armitage, who's Chief Executive at Anchor Capital. And Andrew Flavel, who's a Wealth Manager at Alpha Wealth. You survived, you survived, you survived. None of you look too worse for wear after 2015, considering 20 shares made some money, Dr. Saville. Yeah, the one that didn't make money was the one I chose. You see, why <laughs> do you steal my lines from me? But, 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 but we let's get that out of the way quickly. Okay, well, there, there, was a, there was a day this time last year where we had four of the brightest minds in the country. You'll notice three of them aren't here. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we got the easiest one to beat up Shouldn't on that. Be <laughs> um, and Dr. Savile chose Anglo American this time last year. Mm. But what was interesting was. Three other guys with him also chose. It was absolutely unanimous. One stock pick for the year ahead. Mm -hmm. And Anglo-American, according to my numbers, down 71%. Primarily, uh, I suppose Kumba was a big factor in there, down 88% last year. But then those nasty little iron ore assets in Latin America uh, and the write-downs and the crisis facing Anglo-American in terms of its liquidity right now. Is this the year for Anglo-American, Dr. Saville? I've got to stay with the, with the idea because they've got fantastic uh, portfolio of underlying assets. Um, if my memory serves correctly, one of the arguments that we made for Anglos this time last year was the hidden gem inside of there, which is De Beers. And <coughs> I would venture that right now De Beers is comfortably worth more than the entire market cap of, uh, of Anglos. Which is why some people are saying that they should be listing De Beers, they should be unbundling yeah. De Beers again. Poor sure. De Beers doesn't know whether it's in or out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, but that's what they're going to do. But, but, but you look back at 2015, you've learned some big lessons, no doubt, in terms of value is value, yes, but value can get cheaper before it's uh, worth buying. Wi without a doubt. And it also underlines the importance of recognizing that a stock pick isn't an investment. That a stock pick is exactly that. What you really want if you're building an investment portfolio is you need uh, a diversity of ideas. So you would want to complement your Anglos, which is heavily reliant on base metals. You'd want to complement that with things that behave very, very differently. Um, but if you have to stick your neck out and choose one, I think uh, Anglos is worth putting back in the pot or keeping in the pot for the simple argument that you've got uh, this portfolio of assets, which includes De Beers, mm. Uh, amongst others. Uh, it doesn't look like anytime soon things are going to get easy for Anglos. We'll look ahead. We'll look ahead later. I want to look back just a little bit. The, the one that really, I think, has stunned everybody, Peter, is Brait. Um, a, a very aggressive strategy last year to offshore virtually everything. Sure. Sell Pepco and take the money and buy assets. Virgin Active, buying into retail in, in the United new Kingdom, uh, into New Look. I mean, that is uh, the, by far and away the biggest winner of, uh, of 2015. The question is, do they have the magic to do it all again, I suppose? Yeah, I think there was a metamorphosis of the company from a business mm -hmm. that did private equity and hedge funds in South Africa into, into kind of a global business with, with international assets. There's no doubt that people placed a premium on uh, the kind of the, the management and the people behind it. And I think part of the game, in fact, Adrian and I were talking before, if the market supports a share, you know, you can raise capital and do things um, at, at high share prices. Um, and that in turn creates more value. The underlying value goes up um, because you've added to your base at a higher level. And Brad's um, at two times NAV, isn't it? Well, in, that's that, in that region? On the it, intrinsic NAV. So, yeah. so, so it depends. If you, if you take what they've paid for things like New Look, uh, you get to a high premium to NAV. Okay. Um, we run a model on how we would value the underlying businesses. Um, and if you value them according to market peers, and this is a big debate one would have, um, you get to roughly 150 Rand a share. Mm. Um, but in, 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 in good times, when people are pre prepared, the market is prepared to place a premium on, on assets that look good. Um, you know, in these kind of companies, they're prepared to put market-related multiples in businesses. Um, if the market turned against it, um, we could easily be having a conversation at 100 Rand saying it's expensive. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we, we backed them, we backed the management, we liked the story. We took a view that the market would, we, we were very confident in the fact that they had some deals in the pipeline um, and they would do good business. Um, and, and that came through. Um, the, the, they've kind of used up their, their current capacity at the moment. Um, so to do the trick again, it would, it would be another capital raise mm. and, and finding another great asset. I think Breit's, I mean, on the other side of it, and we're still a big holder of it, and, and 
uh, you obviously a much more nervous holder at 150 rand than 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 at half that price. Um, you know the underlying assets really have to work well to justify. Um, the value that uh, mm. that they're putting in. Uh, Andrew, the, one of the biggest lessons for me from tw from 2015 is never let emotion get in the way of an investment. Uh, mm. The second best performing share last year, at 90%, was Curo Holdings, which in about April, May last year, there was a massive furore. There was a group of black parents at a school near Rodeplatz, mm. which said, Class has been divided along racial lines. And if you live your life on social media, as some of us might, um, you got the very sense that this was the, the death knell for Curo. People were swearing they would disinvest, they would, they would, they would boycott the school, and it was game over for Curo. Uh, yeah. Curo bided its time, the, the Advertech deal didn't happen, and the share price of Curo went up because it provides a service that is deeply needed in a country. Sure. I mean, it really, along with Advertech, had a great year last year. And if we look at talking about raising capital, every time Curo are looking to expand, they're raising capital at a premium to their NAV, and they've just got market support supporting their share price, exactly what mm -hmm. Peter's saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got um, a business that's fulfilling a need and is kind of the population have realized that we actually need government intervention, uh, we need private sector intervention to help the government in terms of educating this country. And that's why you've had massive support for Curo and the rollout. They've been able to constantly raise capital and just, just build their numbers. So, I mean, kind of a short, a short government, long private sector in the education space. Do, really. they go, do they go for Advertech again this year? Oh, it's a hard one to call. They didn't get it last year. So I think maybe they'll just carry on focus on their business this year. Advertech's not re-rated significantly and is priced a lot higher than when they were looking at it initially. Yeah, no, it most certainly has. One of the big factors that lifted the overall market by minuscule percentage points um, over the last year was what four or five shares. Mm. Um, Steinhoff, sure. SAB Miller, the buyout of SAB Miller, lifting that one, um, and, and a couple of others. A lot of that is currency, obviously. Yeah, and 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 again, it's a <laughs> currency-driven market. In real terms, this is a despondent market. Yeah, it's a very disappointing market. If you take out three stocks, <coughs> so the market gave you. Uh, uh, inflation type returns low last digits. year. Yeah, yeah, low single digit. Um, if you take out British American Tobacco, uh, SAB Miller, and Nuspass, the market return is negative. Yeah. So but just three we, stocks for you. Two. Out, uh, <laughs> three of the losers, you might come to the oh, same. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, we're, we're <laughs> the bigger disparity you might get into last year. Digit, uh, then, then I, I don't think you'll see that for a long, long yeah. time. The, the With big shares, the some really big ups, some really big downs. Yeah. Yeah. British American uh, Br uh, Brait, I beg your pardon, was up 103 percent. At the bottom end, um, you, you, you had Lonman down 96 percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that was the divergence. And if you went big in resources last year, it, well, you're on the it's street. If you if you went big. On, on diversified global companies, you did okay. The RAND, again, is going to be a big factor this year. In dollar terms, every South African with South African assets is 30% poorer, regardless yeah, of... One year ago, it's 31%. Yeah. We yeah. did the yeah. call this morning. So, uh, What's quite interesting yeah. is that uh, a part of the market that would normally respond very favorably to RAND weakness is the resource cluster. And because that, of the Chinese weakness, the depressed demand. prices, there's just no response there. In fact, it's almost been an anti-RAND play. Mm. It's the same yeah. one of the same reasons that the RAND is weak and has been the reason that mm. those shares have gone down. Yeah. So, you've, so had you've, had a, you've had a reverse yeah. RAND uh, impact. Okay, so how do we play it? How do we work this market, Andrew, to our, f to, uh, to our benefit um, in what is going to be a year at which we're going to try to dodge the ratings downgrade. We're going to try to dodge a recession. We're going to have to cope with a, a greater uh, propensity of the Reserve Bank to raise interest rates. It's not a year in which investors rush into markets uh, no, ill-advised. I mean, Bruce, I think there needs to be a kind of focus on more predictability and predictable incomes and earning streams from businesses. It, there is absolutely zero predictability in any of these performances. But of the, no, not in the performances, but of yeah, the underlying sure. businesses. So kind of taking a look, rather than taking a big bet that there's going to be a global recovery and consumption of commodities, therefore resource businesses are going to rally, we could look to businesses that just have strong cash flow yields, have had them through the cycle and can continue to, to deliver. And, uh, and when it comes to and businesses that are slightly bigger the next day than they were the day prior, irrespective of kind of global conditions. And a big theme for us this year as well is low correlation. So your passive strategies for us, this is not a year to be a passive, a Satrix 40 holder, for example, just because we, yeah, sure, they're, they're a cheap product and they give you access to exactly what you want, but entering the market at 18, 19 times earnings, 
you're targeting three to five percent returns at these type of levels from a statistical probability perspective. So it's not the most efficient risk adjusted but, measure. But for ordinary investors though, you don't go and jump out of the frying pan into the fire because if you are, say you've got your, your, gra your, your global net worth of 100,000 Rand or 500,000 mm -hmm. Rand and you've been buying Citrix 40 religiously month on month uh, with, 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 a, with a direct debit, you don't go and flog your Citrix 40 and now go and pop it in the bank. Yeah. I think one of the things to understand is if you're buying the market, it's very different to a year ago. If you're buying the market, you had quite a bit of resource waiting. Yeah. If you're buying an index type fund, your, your, your market composition, because of these big changes, yeah. Yeah, Citrix is a very different product to a year ago, yeah. which Better. is something people don't think about. Better? So, so it, it depends on your view of the market. If yeah. you want to have exposure to the things that have taken a pounding, Citrix is quite a bad place to do it. Because your Anglo's component, if you if you went along with Adrian's view, but is quite small in the Citrix. You could buy the resi. Yeah, so then you would move into a different index product. Yeah, if but you then you're getting active. It. And you're getting kind of this new smart beta passive yeah. strategy coming through. And for the retail investor on the street, I mean, either they're going to go passive or back a smart manager to, to manage their assets. Okay, this isn't good enough. You're going to have to come back tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> because now we're looking ahead. Dr. A Adrian Savile is going to be joining us tomorrow night. He's the chief strategist at Canon Asset Managers and also at Citadel. Peter Armitage, the chief executive of Anchor Capital and Andrew Flavel, wealth manager at Alpha Wealth. Join me again tomorrow as we look ahead. So, yes, the year before, uh, last year, it makes perfect sense in retrospect. Of course, Kumba was going to lose 80%. Of course, Anglos was going to be down by nearly 80%. And Lonman was going to be virtually wiped out. And of course, Breit was going to make more than 100% return for, sm uh, for smart investors. Uh, it's a pity if you bought Lonman and Breit, because then you made nothing. But we'll try and look ahead next time on The Money Makers. Thanks for watching. There'll be more from the investing minds on The Money Makers tomorrow. Till then, bye-bye.